Norpux. Today I'm going to be checking out Iron Pineapple for the first time. And apparently, this is supposed to be hilarious. And I need a laugh today. So, I have a relationship with games like Elden Ring. I have a relationship with games like Dark Souls and things like that. With the, the same way I do with the Bubonic Plague. Meaning, I stay away from it at all costs. Because... In other games, like League and things like that, um, I provide more salt than the Red Sea. I, I, I need to stay relaxed, or else my blood pressure will spike up, and um, that'll be the yeah, that'll be a bad day. But I've heard this is funny. I like watching other people suffer besides me. So yeah, let's go with this. This is the first time checking out Iron Pineapple. All of his description, all of his, all of his descriptions are gonna. What is wrong with me? All of his links are gonna be in the description down below. Please check him out. Check me out in the description down below as well. Let's get started. Elden Ring's DLC is designed for endgame characters. Level 150, fully upgraded weapons, armor, talisman, spirit summons, everything. And I'm sorry. Does he have a pillar on a handle behind his head? Even then, it's the most challenging content in the game. But what if instead of entering the DLC with a fully prepared character, I did the opposite? What if I entered with a level one character with an empty inventory? That's what the he's wearing a loincloth. This is deceptive. This video is about. So here's what I did. I reached the entrance to the DLC with a level one character, and then I discarded everything from my inventory. Weapons, armor, talismans, consumables, upgrade materials, all gone. The okay. only exceptions were my HP flask, FP flask, torrent whistle, and flask of wondrous physic, since I can't get rid of those. From here, the okay. rules are pretty simple. How far can I make it by only using things I find in the DLC? After that, anything goes. Like, leveling up is fair game. But there's one very important feature of this challenge. Since okay. I'm only using things I find, that includes upgrade materials. So going back to the round table hold to buy smithing stones is off limits. Also, I'm restricting myself to only the first region of the map, the gravesite plains. This is mostly to make the challenge more interesting by limiting my options because I thought it might be too easy if I had access to the whole map. The goal will be to defeat the first major boss, the dancing lion. If I can do that, I'll consider this a success. Okay. Let's get started. I began my journey by trying to punch some enemies at the Scorched Ruins. I didn't really feel like spending 10 minutes to kill a single enemy, so I moved on to find a weapon. The first thing that came to mind were the Beast Claws, as they were available right near the start. However, to get them, I would need to defeat Mr. Loger. Now, I knew I had no shot at beating him in a fair fight, Right. who said it had to be fair? If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. That actually worked. I approve of this message. Do I get the weapon? I do, yes. Nice. And with that, I had a weapon and 3,000 runes to spend on leveling up. Before leveling though, I rode north to the Church of Consolation uh -huh. so I could grab the two Skadu Tree fragments that were inside. I then rode over to the Three Path Cross Site of Grace and grabbed one more fragment. I spent my runes on leveling my Strength to 13 and my Dexterity to 11 as those were the minimum required stats to use the Beast Claws. Next, I used the three Skadu Tree fragments I had to raise my Skadu Tree Blessing to level 2. This okay. is the main thing people keep underestimating with the DLC. It's impactful. Not only was I now getting a 10% boost to my damage, but my defenses got bumped up by a lot too. Even with no armor, my physical damage negation had gone from 0 to 9%. That's not nothing. Anyway, I rode back over to the Scorched Ruins to try out the beast. I love the animation of that stuff because it quite literally looks like, yeah. Beast Claws. That's when I realized I'd made a great choice. Beast Claws can inflict bleed. Jesus! And the Savage Claws skill on the weapon made it easy to proc bleed as well. The great thing about bleed is that it does a huge chunk of damage, and the damage from it proccing is the same even if the weapon isn't upgraded. So already, I had a viable way to kill standard enemies susceptible to bleed despite only being level 5. I killed a few more enemies for some easy runes, but I still had to be careful because they could almost certainly one-shot me. I then jumped up the ruins to reach the chest at the top. Here I got the Blade of Mercy Talisman, which okay. was another great early find since it boosts attack power by 20% for 20 seconds after landing a critical hit. I then rode north to find this guy with a pot on his head. Always be on the lookout for these guys. Killing him was a little scary with the surrounding enemies, but I did it and I was rewarded with another Skadu Tree Fragment. There you go! From here, I rode north to grab the backhand blades to give myself another weapon option. For now though, I'd stick with the Beast Claws because bleed just seemed too good. I spent my runes to level up five more times with more strength and dex. I considered Vigor, but I also thought I'd probably get one shot regardless at this point, so I ignored it for now. I then rode west toward Bellarot. On the way, I grabbed yet another fragment, so I upgraded my Blessing to level 3. Time for the dungeon. Obviously I was doing this- 
Dude, I can't. I can't even with this kind of stuff. I, I'm not good at video games. I am not good at video games. I never, never, never claim to be. I actually kind of suck at them. It is what it is. I know my flaws. Do you embrace yours? But when people are doing stuff like this, I can only just sit back in awe and just wonder, like speedrunners especially. I'm just, I just sit there and I just stare at the screen, just wondering how in the world they put all this stuff together. So kudos to him for this, but good God, man. It's too early, but I wanted to at least see how bad it was and hopefully find some more tools or upgrade materials along the way. Strong. After running past the first giant scorpion, I was met with a horde of little ones. This is one of the reasons I love doing challenge runs. It turns what is usually a non-threat into an actual encounter where I had to be mindful of spacing and find the right level of aggression. Also, I noticed that I wasn't dying one hit. This Yay. was encouraging. Feeling confident, I was immediately humbled by a scorpion waiting to ambush me up the stairs. Hooray! The second time, I baited out the attack and then ran past. Reaching the first checkpoint, I decided to spend all my runes on leveling Vigor. Even okay. though most enemies would still one-shot me, it seemed worth it for encounters with smaller enemies, and hopefully it would eventually be enough for even the big guys. Speaking of which, there was a big shadow guy just ahead. I kinda nice. figured I'd be in trouble, but the Beast Claws managed to stunlock him, and this did the trick alongside bleed damage. It still took a while to kill him though, and I'm kinda lazy, so I decided to mess around with some good old fashioned ladder shenanigans too. <laughs> Easy money. Continuing through Bellarot, I ran past the rest of the enemies and dodged the magic to reach the next checkpoint. Now, let's see if I can take out this big guy and I'm dead. Yeah, I tried that, fighting yeah. him a few more times. That man eats a lot of beef. But I think he's immune to bleed, so that was a non-starter. The good news was that I noticed that not every move was a one-shot, so I definitely made the right call by investing points in the Vigor. Up ahead, I defeated another big shadow enemy, and he dropped a Smithing Stone 6, my first upgrade material. This okay. was a good start, and hopefully the first of many, because as a reminder, I was restricting myself to only use upgrade materials I actually found in the DLC area. I ran into the next room, guarded Ow. by more giant scorpions, and grabbed the Bone Bow. I figured this would be a great option to have once I got some arrows. Next, I jumped over some nearby rubble, which led me to a secret room. I was immediately grabbed by a bug random pug 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 noise god I, ca I can't speak english guys i'm sorry enemy but i managed oh, fast yay. enough to escape the ground yay. before it killed me inside this area i found another skadu tree fragment and right outside i picked up the dried bouquet talisman this provides a 20 percent damage boost for 30 seconds after a summoned spirit dies so if I ever found any spirit ashes, this would be a solid option. After that, I ran along the rooftops where the stone bird enemies are, and I picked up uh -huh. three level two smithing stones. So from here on out, I'm not gonna cover every single smithing stone I find, but just understand that I'm pretty much constantly scouring areas to find them, and I'll update you periodically. Eventually, okay. after a bit of trial and error, I managed to run past all the enemies except the final big guy at the end. I was pretty nervous. Nice. Oh my God. <laughs> and there you go. Nice. I made it to the checkpoint outside the dancing lion fight. I thought it'd be a good idea to at least attempt it to get a baseline, and I'm happy to say I dealt 82 damage before dying. Excellent <laughs> job, me. I saw that I could summon Freya though, so I was curious how much she could do on her own if I summoned her and then just stood back to watch. She survived for three minutes and managed to deal about 15% of the boss's health. Not terrible, but she definitely wasn't going to carry me. Right. That seemed like a good time to move on. To the north, I grabbed the Great Katana near the Ghost Flame Dragon. I didn't have the stats for it right now, but I wanted it as another potential option for later. So far, we're about an hour into the run, and this is what my stats look like. I rode east across the- He's an hour into a run that would take me three days to do, and a lot of screaming, and a lot of questioning my sanity. Gallic Great Bridge. And in the camp, I picked up yet another fragment, allowing me to boost my blessing to level four. Just north of here, I followed this path leading to a little room where I picked up the Spell Drake Talisman plus three. This boosted my magic damage negation to 42%. I decided to stop messing around and go to the place I knew I should stop have gone Stop messing from the start. around? Stop messing around. Okay, okay. The Ruined Forge Lava Intake. Smithing stones would be the key to any type of success for this challenge. And this area had a bunch of them. Now, I could have just run in, grabbed the stones, and left. But as a matter of principle, I wanted to prove I could at least kill one golem before taking any of the stones. Do it! For this, I went with the backhand blades, since their blind spot weapon skill allowed me to get behind them easily. From here, it was simply a matter of hitting his weak spot a few times to get him to stagger and then backstabbing him. Nice. The issue, of course, is that I was using an unupgraded weapon on a low-level character, and this meant that I would need to backstab him quite a few times in a row, and even a single mistake would result in me getting one shot and needing to start over. Hey, uh, again, and again, and again, and again. 
Then I don't have the patience for this. Assuming he wasn't pressed up against the wall, after landing a backstab, all I needed to do was run over, charge a heavy attack, and land it just as he was standing back up, and this would instantly trigger a follow-up stagger. I could chain this together indefinitely, and that's exactly what I did. In the end, this worked, and I counted 18 staggers to finally get him. I was also rewarded with him dropping a smithing stone 6 and 7 for my efforts. Nice! After this, I gathered up all the smithing stones in the area, and I even killed the rest of the golems. I also grabbed the new smith script dagger throwing weapon. In the end, here was my upgrade stone situation. Not bad. However, this would all be for nothing if I couldn't find at least 12 level 1 smithing stones. I was worried about this since it was very possible I wouldn't find any more within the starting area, and I don't think any enemies dropped them either, so huh. farming wasn't an option. For now, I pushed ahead. Outside, I tried out the throwing daggers on the big ogre enemies. The dagger's damage and range is pretty underwhelming, but I figured out you can abuse the jumping heavy attack to land repeated headshots, and this leads to easy <laughs> staggers. I had a pretty fun time fighting these guys. Oh, Next, nice. I decided to take on Castle Ensis in hopes of finding more upgrade materials. I ran past all the enemies at the start, grabbed the Milady Light Greatsword as another weapon option, and then reached the first checkpoint. Milady where I picked up another Skydu Tree Fragment. From here, I started actually killing most of the remaining enemies in my path using the Beast Claws. I also used some good old fashioned bow shenanigans to take out a few dogs. Here's a fun strat you can do with the crossbow soldiers. They apparently hate walking. If you approach them, they take out their melee weapons. But if you back up even a little, they switch back to the crossbow. During this weapon switching process- That's a lot of range, ranged NPCs in a lot of games. They do that stuff quite a lot. They're left wide open, so I abused this to safely take them out. It was pretty funny watching them switch back and forth with no success on their end. Another fun strat, gravity is once again an effective option with the Black Knight. Just send the elevator up, stand to the side, and boom, easy runes. Bye. I eventually made it to the end of the dungeon, but sadly I barely found any upgrade materials along the way. No, back that's the world. I rode south until I reached another of Mikola's crosses, and I grabbed another fragment. This was enough to boost my blessing to level 5. Without leaving the starting zone, I think this is as high as I could go up. So not only was I getting a 25% damage boost, but my damage negation was a whopping 20% even without armor. Teolier was sitting next to the Site of Grace, and I bought the Deadly Poison perfume bottle from him. Poison is always a gimmicky and potentially effective strat in FromSoft games, so I figured it was a good option to have. Okay. Next, using the cliffside nearby, I jumped down to the lower region of the area all the way to the riverbed underneath the Great Bridge. Here I went through the waterfall and found the two-headed turtle talisman, which greatly boosted my stamina recovery. I also realized I had found some pants, so I decided to cover up- PANTS! At long last, he is out of the thong, okay? At long last, he is out of the thong. Next, I went to the Dragon's Pit Cave. And what do you know, I found six level one smithing stones right at the start. Very Huge. nice. With this and the other stones I had, I actually had enough to get a plus eight weapon. However, since I'm indecisive and didn't know what I wanted to commit to yet, I held off on upgrading for now. Also, I thought it would just be more interesting to see more of this DLC through the lens of an unupgraded weapon. Speaking of which, I switched to the Great Katana. The damage is solid, I like the moveset, and it inflicts bleed just like the Beast Claws. I then found a path- I'd do the Katana because, for me, for some strange reason, anytime I see it, either, either Katana or the Beast Claws, because Beast Claws are funny, it's like- What are you doing? Stop being grumbly. She's just grunting down there. Hold on a second. You guys, like, one second. Plug ASMR time. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. <sighs> tell us your thoughts on the... Tell us your thoughts on how this... The world is today. Go ahead. <laughs> tell us your thoughts. <laughs> Insightful. You just want me to put you down. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Path leading to the upper plateau area of the region. And I actually totally missed this on my first playthrough. While here, I grabbed the incursion painting. I also I, like I was saying, I'm, I would seriously be hard-pressed between the Beast Claws and the Katana, because on one hand, Beast Claws funny, on the other hand, Katana... I mean, what can you say about, you know, throwing around a sword bigger than you are? That, that's, that's ultimate anime fun times for me. I jumped down to the Church of Benediction and grabbed the Oathseeker Knight armor set. I put oh, it on nice. and I was still able to medium roll. And most importantly, my damage negation was now all the way up to 40%. Yes, armor matters. 
With this, I wanted to do another vibe check on the Dancing Lion. I also wanted to test out the poison bottles. Despite not having enough arcane to equip it properly, I could still inflict poison. The best way to do this was with the weapon skill, but this had the unfortunate side effect of poisoning me too. There you and go. sadly, even after poisoning the lion, the damage just wasn't that impressive, and it didn't last that long. <coughs> still though, using this strategy alongside the NPC summon, I was able to get him all the way to phase 2, which I thought was pretty solid given the circumstances. Anyway, back to exploring. Not bad. I fought one of the big chakram enemies right at the start of the gravesite plains with my great katana, and after a couple minutes, I managed to take him down. He dropped the cursed blade mask, and when equipped, this boosted my dexterity by 5 at the cost of slightly reducing the healing from my crimson flask. I also rode around killing some of the stone birds because I noticed they dropped smithing stones 3, 4, and 5 at random. Okay. Then I found the location of the incursion painting, and my reward was the serpent crest shield, a pretty great medium shield that I would also end up using. Next to this was the Bellarot Jail, and I decided to enter it to once again hopefully find more materials. I also tried using the Milady here just for fun. Milady. Pro tip I discovered, you know the human flesh blob enemies? They have a grab attack, but since it takes a while to pull you in, I discovered you can actually take zero damage here if you just mash fast enough to escape. Very good to keep in mind. Huh. Eventually, I made it to the bottom of the jail to the Demi-Human Swordmaster. Yeah. This guy is fucking awesome, and because I didn't struggle with him on my first playthrough, I never realized just how many moves he has. He'll deflect your attacks, teleport around, and do tons of magic sword combos that inflict frostbite. He even has a grab attack where he uses the force to toss you around. This guy is just a Yoda from the prequels. Nice. He's killing me in two to three hits, and sometimes this would come in one combo that guaranteed death if I got hit by the first attack. Huh. I was doing my best using the Milady for this, and I wasn't seriously hoping to beat him, but I thought it'd be fun to try still. Then I switched back to the Great Katana, and I don't know, something clicked for me. I start off by avoiding his attack, and then going for a backstab. I missed the backstab, but I land a few hits still. I go in, jump attack, and follow up with the light attack. He deflects this, but I discovered that the trick is to just keep attacking, because I could huh. still interrupt his follow-up. I dodge the jump attack and go for another backstab, but I'm not quite close enough again. Still though, I land oh, a couple nice. hits and proc bleed. One, two, three. I avoid the I don't know, I'm an idiot. The grab attack and use the end lag to land a charged heavy, which leads into a stagger. Big damage, big props again, and I get the damage boost from the Blade of Mercy Talisman. Then I land some more hits and figure out I can kind of bully him with the overhead stance heavy attack skill on my Grey Katana. Huh. This leads to another stagger. More damage, and my buff is refreshed. I mostly avoid his flurry attack, roll away, and finally this time, I manage to punish his jumping attack with a backstab after he falls in a weird way. Oof. I follow up with oh, a few I... overhead and light attacks. He starts landing more hits, but I just try not to panic and play safe. Another jump attack from him. Oh my god, this is like watching somebody actually go through this kind of stuff when... I don't I don't know I don't know how to tell you guys how this feels for me because basically this is me watching somebody do something that I know is completely beyond me just based off my I don't have the reaction time or anything like that nowhere near what this guy does. This is actually really enjoyable. And another backstab punish for me. I'll let the rest play out without commentary. Nice. Now, I say this at the same time I really enjoy Kingdom Come Deliverance. Yep, I beat this guy with an unupgraded weapon. Nice! I was incredibly pumped. I also got his Spirit Ashes as a reward. This encounter reminded me of how good Bleed is. I went back to the Dancing Lion to see if he could be Bled too, and yep, it turns out he can be. With this knowledge, the Great Katana seemed like the best weapon choice to invest my smithing stone it into. It is! Before committing though, I wanted to get a few more stones, and I also thought it would just be kind of fun to save plus zero for longer. I went to the Fog Rift Catacombs next. There's a very easy to miss secret here. If you go up near where you can find the Great Ghost Glove Wart, you can jump off the side right here to get on top of the spikes. From here, you just follow the passage to collect the Spirit Ashes for the Black Knight Commander. Between this and the Demi-Human Ashes, I decided I wanted to try summoning. So I started leveling up my mind. Okay. I also decided to go with the Black Knight Ashes since they only cost 111 FP compared to the 129 for the Demi-Human. I was feeling confident after the last boss, so I tried to take on the Death Knight. Sadly, he was immune to bleed damage, so I was kind of screwed from the start. <laughs> However, I did figure 
figure out you can punish most of his attacks with a backstab. Right as he finishes a combo, you just roll toward him and go for the backstab. I did this for 6 minutes straight and <laughs> managed to deal a little over half of his health, but I sadly messed up, got grabbed, and died. I was satisfied enough with that hey, and decided to move guys. on. Here's another smithing stone <sighs> update. Basically, I just needed to get one more smithing stone for him. So, I went out to kill a few of the stone birds until they drop one. With that acquired, that was enough for me to upgrade my great katana all the way to plus 17. And I made it keen to give it extra deck scaling. There because you go. the golems in the lava intake area dropped level 6 and 7 smithing stones, I technically could have grinded to get to plus 21, but I didn't want to do any more farming than I already had. And I thought it would be more interesting at a lower level anyway. From here, I almost felt ready to take on the dancing lion. But first, I wanted to kill the giant furnace golem outside. Now, I don't love these guys, and I think- Giant furnace golem. Because only you can prevent forest fires. They take way too long to kill, even outside of a challenge run, but they're not too bad. It's all about just jumping over their attacks, wailing on their legs, and staggering them three times to make them fall over for a critical hit. Another pro tip, you can use the iframes from getting on or off your horse to avoid the explosion from the jump attack. You're better off running away, of course, but hey, it looks cool. Just, you know, be careful. The timing yeah. is pretty tight. After a few failed attempts, I took it down, and my reward was the Deflecting Heart Tier. This is my favorite new item in the DLC. During its 5 minute duration, perfectly timed blocks cost almost no stamina, have a higher damage negation, and as a bonus, guard counters after perfect blocks deal extra damage. Honestly, this item should be a talisman or base game mechanic. It just slots into the combat loop so well, and makes defensive play far more active. To test this out, I went back to the Death Knight. I still use my backstab strategy, but I also mixed in some perfect block guard counters to stagger him as well. And after a few minutes, I got him. My reward was there the Crimson go. Amber Medallion plus three. I equipped this right away. But now, finally, it was- Okay, so twin axes, that's what I'd actually go with if I had a choice between Katana, Beast, or twin axes, because you can't beat Viking energy. You just can't, okay? If you attempt to beat Viking energy, a Mana Moth will have some things to say to you. Time for the main event the Dancing Lion. Here's what my build looked like. Only being level 65 with a plus 17 weapon would make this very hard, but I felt it was doable. I also decided to ignore summoning Freya to make it more fun. The first part of my strategy was using the Black Knight Spirit Ashes. More fun. Since I didn't find any glove wart to level him up, he would do almost no damage and get annihilated right at the start of the fight. Revered Spirit Ash Blessings hardly make a difference when the Spirit Summon is unupgraded. However, him getting killed was exactly what I wanted. With the Dried Bouquet Talisman equipped, I would get a 20% damage boost for 30 seconds after his death. As okay. another part of this opening strategy, I noticed that the Lion would often lunge in with an attack. If I perfect blocked with the Katana, I would get knocked back and not have time for a follow-up. But if I perfect blocked with my shield, I would stay standing and it would lead into an enhanced guard counter every time. From here, it was all about okay. the jumping attacks to trigger the stance break. Additionally, every time I got a stance break, I would make sure to get another hit in for bonus damage before going for the critical. Then, as the critical finished, I would get one more hit in as he was getting up. Little things like this add up, and I needed every bit of help. Also, I do want to mention that I crafted some hefty fire pots. My <laughs> hope was that they would do huge damage during the lion's ice phase, but sadly, it seems like this damage is the same regardless of when I hit him, and it's just not super impressive. And then Imagine you're just sitting in your room, some guy walks in with a big sword, summons the ghost of his ancestor, and then starts throwing potted plants that you made out of fire and hate. And yeah, from here, it was just a matter of actually learning the fight and dying lots of times in the process. Oh, so there you go. many failed attempts, here's how it went. I gotta say, it looks incredible. The game looks incredible. Yeah, the the that thing looks insane. I love what like even though I don't ever want to wind up playing this because I would lose my sanity. I love the look of these creations. I really love the look of them. This thing looks so otherworldly. It's just the attacks, the attack animations, everything is so smooth. And for me, I was around during the Atari day, so 
This, for me, is just like watching a masterpiece. And it's only going to get better with time. Got it. That's it. And there you go. Nice. Challenge complete. I had beaten the Dancing Lion after starting at level 1 and only using things I found in the first region of the DLC. Now, obviously I could continue the run, but mm -hmm. I think it's best to call it here since it would simply get a lot less interesting. This specific challenge is most fun at the start when you have nothing, and past this point, especially as I fully upgraded my weapon and gained a few more levels, I think it would resemble a normal playthrough a bit too closely. So yeah, nothing crazy, but I had a great time with this mini challenge. Whenever I do something like this, I always learn a few things along the way because of how I'm forced to change my approach from a normal playthrough, and this one was no different. As a bonus, here's how I killed Moog to set up the challenge on my level 1 character in case you want to try it for yourself. Shout out to Soul Obsession, a okay. channel with only 23 subscribers for his video showcasing the strategy that got me through it. Basically, you go in with a plus 10 Bloodhound Fang, drink your Physic with the Strength and Dexterity Crystal Tears inside, apply Blood Grease, and then Shackle Moog. From there, if you just follow what you see on screen, this will just work, and you can entirely skip phase 2. I had to modify the strategy slightly by giving myself an extra buff from Golden Vow since my stats were lower, but aside from that, it worked exactly as advertised. Turns out you can heavily cheese Moog even at level 1. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much for watching, and keep an eye out for more videos soon. <laughs>